This is the only Klaviyo pop-up form tutorial you're ever gonna need. My name's Gavin, I run an email and SMS marketing agency, and this is all I do, email and SMS marketing. Today, I'm gonna show you how to create pop-ups, fly-outs, and a whole bunch of other cool things that ensure that your list grows at the fastest rate possible, but also ensures that you maximize the subscriber to customer conversion rate, which is how many people subscribe and then become customers. That's all we really care about, right? But I'd much rather get five email subscribers and two customers compared to 10 email subscribers subscribers and one customer. So let me show you how to do it. Take a look at this. So I'm actually gonna be working in two different tabs. I'm gonna be working from this design file and I'm also gonna be working from directly within the Klaviyo account. Now, when you are doing signup forms, there are typically going to be three different forms that you create each having their own desktop and mobile version. So what do I mean by that? The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to have a signup form that looks like this. That is a desktop version and a mobile version with your offer on it. Now, you're gonna have the email address. That's the only field that you're gonna to wanna to capture. And you're gonna have the terms and conditions of your coupon code right below the enter field. The reason we only capture the email address here is because the more fields somebody sees, the higher or rather the lower the conversion rate is. You're trying to reduce as much friction as possible, right? And so basically the first thing you're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the rules and the conditions for these forms in a second. This is gonna be designed to fly, pop up after eight seconds and then fly out after 45 seconds. I'll explain that in a second. And then you're gonna have a desktop version and a mobile version. The reason you're gonna have two separate versions is because people are gonna interact with these forms differently and you wanna be able to design it with the, for example, thumb in mind for this section here and the cursor in mind for this section. So email address is all you're gonna capture with a very clear offer of it. Then what you're gonna do in the second step, personally, I like to ask them what they're interested in. And then we can update their profile property with their interest category as the second step. So this is step one. When they complete it, it takes them to the second step and you can figure out what they're interested in. And then from there, you can then curate the welcome series based off what they've told you they're interested in. I'll show you how to do that in a second here. But step two is what they're interested in. And step three, you're gonna give them the discount code. You absolutely want to ensure that the discount code is on the signup form because you do not want to force somebody off of your website to go into their inbox to get distracted to then give you money. Make it as easy as possible for somebody to find and use this discount code. And what you're gonna do is make sure this call to action is auto apply. It auto applies the discount code at checkout, which is gonna increase your on-site conversion rates. Step one, step two, Step three, the reason I don't do that is because I have SMS come up as a separate form which targets email subscribers because the moment I add SMS here, it increases the signup form drop-off rate. You're gonna see anywhere between 25 to 45% increase in form completion rate, or sorry, decrease in form completion rate if you ask for SMS. Some of you might think, okay, well that doesn't really matter, right? Because if they drop off on the form, I've already got their email address, wrong. The reason that is wrong is because it means that 25 to 45% of people do not see this discount code and they have to go into their inbox to actually see it, meaning the on-site conversion rates drop, people leave your website, you should be prioritizing for conversion rates on the form. So make sure you ask for SMS separately. Then we're gonna have a second form. This form here is just gonna display the offer that you've given them up here. I'm gonna explain the conditions for this in a second here, but your second form, notice one's gonna be desktop and mobile, is literally just gonna have the discount code reminding the reader of what it is. I'm gonna show you what segment you're gonna to wanna to target for this form, but this form here is designed not to capture email, but remind people who've already subscribed for email marketing to use their discount code. And you're gonna display this form in a strategic way which I'll show you in a second. But this is how you increase your on-site conversion rates with pop-ups. The third form, if you do wanna capture SMS, is going to be a separate form. I'm gonna show you what segment you're gonna to wanna to target with the SMS, but notice I'm not asking for email. I'm only asking for SMS separately, and I'm actually gonna target these forms to only target people who've subscribed to email. I'm gonna show you how we do that in a second here, but you have it, subscribe for SMS, email, desktop, rather desktop, mobile version, Second step, desktop mobile. Now, if you wanna have a discount code here to encourage people to subscribe for SMS, absolutely, you can do that. Personally, I don't actually put a whole lot of emphasis in SMS marketing, a lot of people do. The only time I see it be effective is when you're actually driving a sale, product lease, or product restock, and the way you wanna capture it in a way that doesn't compromise the on-site conversion rates, which is why we do it separately to this form. So, I hope that all makes sense. We have one, two, and three different forms. Okay, this one is to capture email and their interest and give them the discount code. This one is to remind them of their discount code to purchase. This third form here is to capture SMS. How do we actually configure these forms in Klaviyo? Take a look at this. So this is an account that we're working on 
And this form here has the sign up form and the sign up form for desktop. Let me show you these. The forms that I just opened are these forms here. Note, we have very good conversion rates and we're targeting people differently based off their device. So this is the desktop version that I just showed you. Notice the targeting and behavior. It's a pop-up that is designed to show after eight seconds on desktop only. So this only shows to desktop users. That way we can see how people are interacting differently with our form and if we do need to make optimizations, we can. Okay, so $20 off, email address. When they press enter, the button, okay, it submits the form and it shows the next step and submits them to a list, okay? So when they click enter their email address, it's an email input, the label's email address, placeholder text. When they press enter, it's gonna submit them to a list. Now this list will trigger our welcome series. Make sure that the list that you submit, that they submit, triggers the welcome series, very important. Then it's gonna show next step. It doesn't close the form, it's gonna show next step, okay? Then we go to here. What are you interested in? These are buttons. These are submit form buttons. And it also shows the next step. So it's an action, submit form, show next step. Now here's what we're doing. When they press this button, what are you interested in? We've added a custom property, submit hidden fields. You'll see this on your form. And this adds a property, interest category, meet. So we created the category, interest category, and we know it's meet. So now when they click this, we know that they're interested in meat. Or if they click tallow, it's interest category, skincare, because we know they're interested in skincare products. Or if they click this, it's both. Interest category is both. So now we're able to take that, that data, and I'll show you how to do this in the welcome series. We're able to take that data and create splits in our welcome series based off of tags on the profile property to send people different emails focusing on what they've told us they're interested in. That's how you create personalized email flows and automations. If they tell us they're interested in meat, we're gonna send them emails that talk about meat. If they tell us they're interested in skincare, we're gonna send them emails that talk about skincare. Capture this interest at the sign up form stage and then send people down different automation sequences. Once they do that, it submits the form and it shows them the next step. And look at this, success. We give them the discount code, okay? And another really important thing here, the URL, when they click it, auto applies the discount code at checkout. It's Parker County, so the name of your company, slash discount, slash enter the code. When they click that, it's gonna auto apply it at checkout, meaning they don't have to go to their email to get the discount code, meaning it is easier for them to give you money. So we have this form here, and then we have the same form for mobile. It's absolutely identical, slightly different layout because we need to make sure that it's easy for people to input these fields using their thumb, not their cursor, and the text is a little bit more legible, but it's the exact same thing, capturing their interest category and then giving them the discount code right here. Now that we have their interest category, let me show you something cool. We're able to create a welcome series. This is the welcome series here, right? Triggered off the welcome series. First email gives them their discount code, second email 12 hours later. If you want a full breakdown on how to build a welcome series, I've got a video, just look on my channel, type in welcome series, it'll come up. But we're able to split people based off their interest category, right? Interest category equals meat. So we send them an email that talks about meat. If their interest category equals skincare, we send them an email that speaks about skincare. If it's both, we send them an email about both. If we don't have any of these interest categories, meaning they didn't complete or tick any of these boxes, we send them an email that speaks about everything, okay? Now we're sending people down personalized messages focusing on what they've told us they're interested in. That's how you create the pop-up form. This is designed to show up after eight seconds as a pop-up, okay? Eight seconds, eight second delay is the best. In my experience, really recommend you do that. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate these forms and we're gonna make them flyouts. So you just literally click the form, hit these three dots, hit clone, gonna go into targeting and behavior. See this? It's now coming from the bottom right-hand corner. Based on rules, after 45 seconds, okay? So this is gonna show up essentially after they close that eight second form, desktop only, okay? And it's gonna give people another opportunity to get your offer at a different stage after 45 seconds in the customer journey. We're also so notice that 45 seconds, you're gonna make it as well. Let me show you this, styles, a flyout. So it's not a pop-up, it's a flyout. It comes out from the bottom right-hand corner. It's the exact same form, but it's coming out after 45 seconds of flyout, and it's giving people another opportunity 
to subscribe for your offer and get the email marketing because it's crazy. You wouldn't give somebody an opportunity to get an offer and they close the form and never give them that offer again, right? It doesn't make any sense. You should have multiple opportunities for somebody to use that offer. So we create a fly out that comes out after 45 seconds and to prevent it from clashing with the pop-up, meaning they just see the pop-up and then the fly out comes out at the same time, you go targeting and behavior and you only show on certain URLs, okay? So you tick this box, only show on certain URLs, this one right here and then have it say containing dash product dash checkout dash cart. What that means is somebody has to be on the product page, the checkout page, or the cart page to see this pop-up form, meaning they are further along in the buying process. They are more explorative. They're seeing different things, right? And now you're actually more likely to be receptive to this offer. Because if they're at the checkout page and they get a $20 off and they haven't subscribed, they are a heck of a lot more likely to submit their email address to get that offer exact same thing okay exact same form do it for desktop and mobile 45 seconds so now you have two touch points that you're getting people with this offer make sense then what we're going to do is we're going to create another form now this form we've got it being a little different but this form can literally be the success message if you want it to be so you can clone the other forms that you have delete all the steps up here so just delete 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 and only have it be the success message what this form is doing here, it is showing people that they have a discount code that they can use. It is targeting people, let me show you this, after 20 seconds, so you're gonna go display, 20 seconds, okay? Mo mobile version, obviously, and desktop version. And look at this, don't forget, you can still use your Welcome 20 for $20 off your first order over $50. It's reiterating the discount code. It's targeting people who are in a segment called subscribed but not purchased. So it's targeting a specific segment of people. Let me show you how you wanna create this segment and why. Okay, so if I go here, go into Clavio, here is this segment. This is subscribed but not purchased. I'm telling you, this is the most in-depth pop-up form guide you're gonna get on YouTube. And this is how we actually get way better results. Subscribe, so you're gonna create these conditions. What somebody has or has not done, they've subscribed to email marketing at least once over all time, and they've placed an order zero times over all time, meaning they're a subscriber, but they're not a customer, and they've subscribed to the list zero times in the last three days, okay? So that means this form that targets these people is only gonna target people who are email subscribers, but have never placed an order before because they're in that segment. Now, the reason we add this final condition what somebody has or has not done, subscribe to list zero times in the last three days, is because we don't want them to subscribe to the list and then immediately get this flyout form and this display of the offer. We wanna give them a little bit of time to use their code before we remind them of their code. In this case, it's three days. I hope that makes sense. This is like advanced sign-up form strategies, but this is how you actually build sign-up forms that convert and help your business. So we're getting a little complex. If you have questions, just let me know. But you create a third form that reminds people of their offer and you need to do so by going into the targeting, creating the list, and then clicking include certain lists and only target that list to reiterate the offer. That's how you increase your on-site conversion rates because it's reiterating the offer to people, okay? And the use code auto applies the discount code at checkout. They click it, it auto applies the discount code at checkout, okay? And no, we don't see any drop off in on-site conversion rates when we have a URL that redirects them. Their cart should already be saved. Their checkout should already be saved so they can just return if they need to recommend doing this. The final form that we have is how we capture SMS. So I like to capture SMS completely separately from email, as I mentioned before, okay? Have a sign up form that targets SMS, targeting and behavior after 30 seconds, and it targets subscribed but not subscribed to SMS. So you're having these forms target specific segments of people, not everybody. So this is only gonna target people who have subscribed to email marketing, but not subscribed to SMS. Let me show you how we've defined the segment subscribed but not subscribed to SMS. We go into list and segments here. We have our segment subscribed but not subscribed to SMS. So they need to have been subscribed to email marketing at least once, subscribed to SMS zero times over all time, and subscribed to list zero times in the last three days. Meaning they are active email subscribers, not active SMS subscribers, but have not just subscribed to email because you don't want to be bombarding people. You want to give them that three day window to then subscribe to SMS marketing. That's when you hit them with that pop-up form. That is how you create signup forms that get kick-ass results like this and get awesome on-site conversion rates and actually move the needle for your email marketing strategy. As an email marketer, you need to be thinking about, or as a business, 
how do you use the email marketing tools to actually increase your on-site revenue and your subscription to conversion rate. This is how you do it. This is how you create email marketing that's actually effective, actually works, and I'm telling you, we rolled this out for all of our clients and it absolutely cranks. If you have any questions, let me know. Once again, this is all I do. If you like this video, subscribe, like the channel, check out the newsletter down below too. There's a bunch of cool tips that I give out twice a week on there. And once again, any questions that you need, let me know. This is all I do. Produce videos, do email marketing, so I'm more than happy to help. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.